briefly. Uh, my name is Dennis Patterson. I'm a lead software engineer with Cerner. I have platform and architectural responsibilities for our fire servers as well as for building out our CDS hooks client implementation. And outside of Cerner, um, I'm a committer on the CDS hooks specification as well as uh, one of the maintainers of the public sandbox. So um, as we get started here, you know, this is an open lab. We're going to be getting into some code, trying some things out. Um, and so if you didn't see the prerequisites in advance, let me briefly go over that. And then I'll circle back around and do a brief recap of CDS hooks. So if you, if you didn't come with your laptop ready, um, you'll have a little bit of time to go and catch up. Um, but essentially, you either need to have Node.js installed, because we're going to be checking out a project and running it that uses Node. Or if you don't have Node and, and Docker is at your disposal, you can use Docker and Docker Compose um, to check out an image and run this within a container. So let me recap just a few slides and CDS hooks. So you can imagine a healthcare provider who is uh, treating a patient and ultimately d they decide to place a particular medication order. So as they do this in their EHR, that triggers an ordering event. So that event of, of selecting that orderable is called order select. And that would trigger uh, any services that are listening to that event and call those external CDS services. Those, uh, it really, because CDS hooks is an API and a framework, they could be services that the EHR also hosts internally, or they could be third party services um, that they have purchased and partnered with. But they call those CDS services to tell them about this particular event that has happened. Then those CDS services may have their own proprietary data that they can use in the execution of logic. They can also use fire data um, that's either prefetched for them and pushed to them, or they can reach back into the EHR um, to retrieve additional data. There's also data that gets pushed to them by way of contextual data around that particular event. And they ultimately return decision support in the form of what's called CDS cards. Now this is just JSON. Um, it's rendered by the CDS client. Um, and there's a few different types of decision support that they can return. The first is information. So just textual data, maybe information about cost, or just a general recommendation without a formal suggestion of an alternative. Um, or they could make a more formal suggestion. They could send a fire payload and say, you know, here's a representation of something you should use instead, uh, prescribe instead, here's a tweak to the order, um, things like that. And that could be rendered as a button that the user clicks on um, to change what they're doing and uh, update their workflow. Thirdly, they could push a smart app. So the CDS service could recognize um, some fundamental criteria around you know, the particular use case, uh, the patient's demographics, or other data that's at their disposal, and ultimately recognize, oh, you know, are you managing hypertension? You know, here's a, you know, an app that would be appropriate and would be potentially helpful to you as you treat this patient, things like that. There's also a mechanism in the specification for discovery. So a given CDS client can call an endpoint that's a discovery endpoint that advertises all of the CDS services that exist at that endpoint, along with you know, what hooks they're interested in, what do they essentially provide, uh, as well as where do they exist, how do you call them. And we do have a cheat sheet. Um, there's a stack of them up here. So as you start getting into the code, feel free to get up out of your chair and walk up and pick one up one of these if you would like. Um, if you navigate to cdshooks.org, on the left-hand side in the navigation panel, there's also a link to that cheat sheet as a PDF, so you can download it um, if you would like. But it's essentially a, a one sheet for the specification. So it's not comprehensive. It's focused primarily on the actual payloads uh, that are interchanged um, between the two parties, the CDS client and the CDS service, as well as a little diagram and some links. Um, and they list out all of the fields in those payloads and a summary of what that field's used for. So beyond that, you'll want to go to the specification to read more, uh, but it can be a handy tool to have right next to you as you develop CDS services or a CDS client for that matter. So here's an overview of what we're going to do today. We're going to go to a project that exists out on GitHub and clone this repository. 
Alternatively, if you want to fork the repo and check into your own um, fork, that works as well. Uh, we'll do a brief tour of that code, walk through what you get out of the box. Then we will open up the CDS hooks sandbox. We will point it at you know, your locally running CDS services and, and try them out, test them, make sure that everything is working. And then there will be some exercises. There will be more exercises than we will have time uh, to do here today. Um, but we will touch on some of those exercises. And any of the other ones that you want to try out, you'll be free to do so afterward. And then once we've done some of the exercises and we're getting close to time, um, we'll wrap up with uh, another few slides on what your next steps would be. All right. So hopefully you all have the prerequisites taken care of. And you'll want to navigate out to Cerner's organization on GitHub to the CDS Services Tutorial Project. So once you're out here at this project, uh, feel free to clone this repo locally. There's also a tab for the wiki, uh, and that's where, you know, as you return to this or you want to share it with anybody else, um, all of this tutorial is available out there and walking through all of the same stuff that we're going to walk through. So let me pull up that code, and we'll look at what we get out of the box. So there's a number of different files in this project. We're going to focus on mainly one of them, but we'll touch on uh, package.json first. So the only the one thing, uh, I guess there's two things uh, that I'll call out in here. One is there's a script um, called start server, which is merely an alias for a, a command using a utility called nodemon um, that will execute and run this index.js as a service running on localhost on port 3000. Um, if you're not familiar with Nodemon, um, the main benefit there is you can continue to make updates uh, to index.js, and it will detect any file system changes and restart the server for you. The only exception to that to, not to note is that uh, some of the exercises will cause you to pull in additional dependencies. So if we get that far and you try to add an additional dependency, um, you want to make sure that you install that dependency um, you know, you know, shut down your server, install the dependency, and then start it up again. And then it'll continue on detecting changes to your uh, index.js file. So let me close that. And let's see, in the background, I'm going to go ahead and install dependencies. So I'm going to run npm install. And let me point to out here on the wiki what commands you can run to do this same thing. All right, so running the project, if you're taking the Node.js approach, you'll want to run um, npm install to install the dependencies, and then you'll be running npm run start server. So and if you have any problems running Node, you can either switch over to Docker, or um, if there's some issue with a particular version of Node, um, just know I'm running, I believe, 11. Um, but you'll run npm run start server, and you should have that running up on, on localhost. Um, if you want to take the Docker approach, you can run docker compose up dat hyphen hyphen build, um, and that'll build the image and start up your running container. And if you, again, this is all out on the wiki if you want to refer to it. So let me walk through some of the code that exists in this project. First off, um, it is a server written in Express. So you know it's not intended for production by any means, but it allows us to have one file that implements uh, or exposes a variety of different APIs, as well as some middleware to support what we're doing today in this lab. So the first thing it's going to do is pull in a middleware for parsing JSON, so somewhat self-explanatory. The next section of middleware is supporting cores. So we're going to be running these services on localhost. We're going to be using sandbox.cdshooks.org as our CDS client, our mock EHR. And, in, and those are two separate origins. So your browser is going to block calls um, to localhost uh, unless we implement cores and give it permission to do so. 
So this is uh, not intended to be a production version implementation of cores, but it, it's just some of the, the essential headers um, to allow us to do this. Next, there's a set of middleware for authorization. Um, there's enough to get us started anyway. And the first thing here is it's gonna bypass any cores pre-flight requests. So if the HTTP method is options, we're not gonna enforce authorization, we're gonna let that go through. Uh, but otherwise, we're gonna start gathering some of the fields that we need um, in order to enforce authorization later. So the first is grabbing the authorization header. Um, and just so outside of the browser, if you wanna use curl or postman or something to call these services, it does default a, a, a bogus bear token that, that works for the current implementation so that you can try that without having to create your, uh, your authorization header, that jot that gets sent to your services. If there were no authorization header, there's logic in here to return uh, an HTTP 401 with a, an WWW authenticate reason indicating that the token is invalid. Um, but beyond that, we'll start taking apart that token, gathering um, the JOT payload, as well as constructing our, our expected audience. So as I talked about in the la last session, when a JOT gets sent to your service, it is it does contain a payload with an audience value that's specifically for this service. And so we're gonna construct that URL uh, for our validation. But since this is just the bare bones to get us started, we'll go ahead and hard code that everything is fine, everything is valid. Um, but after this gets replaced later, probably outside of this session, um, there's logic in here to say, oh, okay, if it's not valid, we'll again return that 401. So now let's get into the actual exposure of um, the APIs of those payloads involved in CDS hooks. So the first is the discovery endpoint. So app.get means that we're exposing, we're allowing for an HTTP get to be sent to our CDS services endpoint. And so we need to construct um, a response that indicates that we have a patient view service and we have an order select service. So we're gonna return um, first, we're gonna create a value that says, okay, we've got a service that listens for patient view. Um, here's its ID, where it's gonna be located, patient view example service. And it is just an example service that will display the name of the patient. We're gonna add a prefetch request, which the um, CDS hooks client, or sorry, the CDS hooks public sandbox will fulfill. It has logic to fulfill um, prefetch requests for patients. And so we'll say that we want this, this resource, the full patient resource to be sent back to us when we, the hook is invoked on the requested patient attribute. And so our actual prefetch template request is give me the patient resource using that patient ID field that's part of that hook context. Next, we'll define our entry for our order select example service. Again, we're listening for the order select hook. It's an example service, and basically what it's gonna do is suggest prescribing aspirin 81 milligram oral tablets. And so we'll return that response. So let's move on to the actual basic services themselves. So we're gonna support a post being sent to CDS services slash patient view example. So I already mentioned the public sandbox does fulfill this kind of prefetch request. So we're not gonna do any checking whether it's there, we're just gonna grab that resource and start constructing the card response. So in our card, we're returning, remember cards is an array, so we're gonna return one element in that array. We'll have a summary that says, okay, we're now seeing that particular patient. So because the patient resource is fire data, we're gonna go ahead and grab the name off of that fire resource, and we'll append the given name and the family name together and have that be returned in our card. This is not a warning card or a critical card, it's an info card. Um, the source of the data, it's the other required field is that it's from this tutorial, and we'll go ahead and throw in a link to learn more about CDS hooks. The next service gets a little bit more um, complex. It's the order select example service. Remember, this is intending to be 
um, suggesting that they order aspirin. So what we need to have is logic in there to say, if they're not ordering aspirin, detect that. If they are ordering aspirin, you know, thumbs up, good job. So um, we're going to look at the context. Now, let me pause here and I'll pull up the specification and we'll look at um, the definition of order select so that we can have that in the back of our minds. So the context for order select has, let me make this a little bigger, it has user ID and patient ID and a counter ID. Um, and those are the same fields that exist in the patient view hook. So there, let's look at these couple additional fields that are unique to order select. So there's draft orders and there's selections. So the reason why these are separate is you can imagine that a, a provider could be placing a number of different orders and as they select each of those orders, they're gonna be added to a, a scratch pad or a shopping cart, if you will, um, to create you know, a list of draft orders that are you know, in that scratch pad. However, when order select is invoked, we want to know specifically which order did they just select. So let's back up for a second. So that means when they select the first order, it'll be added to draft orders and that will be the selection. If they were to add a separate order, that would also be added to the draft orders, but the selection will just be that second order. So that way the CDS service, um, they can use Fire to understand what orders the patient may already have, um, as well as know these in-memory only orders uh, that are existing along with what the provider just selected. So going back to the code, we're gonna grab um, the first entry, um, the first order. And I mentioned that um, the, it's the Rx view tab that we'll be using in the sandbox. So right now that only supports one order at a time and it is a medication. So we'll grab that order as well as the suggestions. We'll have some, a basic sanity check um, to know whether it's a medication request or medication order, uh, ensure that it's one of those and make sure that it's selected as well. And if that's the case, we'll construct our response. We'll move forward with our logic. And so here is where um, the bulk of that logic exists. So since we're pushing aspirin, we want to look at what the medication is um, on the order that was being placed. So we'll look at that Rx norm code and we wanna check to see if it's already aspirin. If it is, we'll return a card that you know, in a real world scenario doesn't provide a lot of, of value, um, but helps us in terms of demoing this. And it'll say, currently prescribing a low dose aspirin, but otherwise we want to make that a suggestion. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take whatever order they placed and simply swap out the medication uh, to point to aspirin. So here we're creating a medication codable concept. We have uh, a coding in here to represent aspirin and we will swap that out and we'll say, reduce cardiovascular risk and prescribe daily aspirin. And we'll even make this uh, a warning card um, just to see a slightly different rendering. And then last is just an instruction to listen on port 3000. So that's what you get out of the box. Uh, default implementations of two different hooks. Let's go and start integrating with the sandbox. So I invite you to go out to sandbox.cdshooks.org. Look like this. Um, and we'll do a little bit of a, a tour of the sandbox. So we have the patient view tab that will invoke the patient view hook. Rx view will invoke the order select hook, but simply constrained today to meds. We'll skip over the PAM imaging tab for now. If you're interested in knowing more about that, that may come up in the uh, smart web messaging talk after lunch in the Richard this afternoon. Um, there is this collapsible CDS developer panel. This will allow us to view any services that have been integrated with the sandbox and view the request that has been sent to that service as well as the response that has come back. So if you click the gear icon, there's a, a number of different things. So you can always reset to the default configuration. There are default CDS services that come with the sandbox but what we wanna do is add CDS services. So click add CDS services. And so the first thing you wanna do there is make sure um, before you select that, that your server is up and running. 
So I'm gonna run npm run start server, so I'm using the node approach. All right, now what you wanna do is go into that text box and type the URL for your discovery endpoint. So now you have to start thinking about, okay, what is the URL, um, not just localhost port 3000, but what's that other path segment that you need in order to point to the discovery endpoint? I'll give you a minute to enter that in and make sure that that's working. So you should have localhost 3000 slash CDS services and click save and you should immediately really see a, a new card that says now seeing Daniel Adams and note that the source is the CDS service tutorial so you know that it is your local uh, running service. Now if we want to see um, the payload sent to that service you can go into this drop down and instead of the default service for patient greeting you can select patient view example you see is recognized and you can see the card response that we just walked through you can see that Daniel Adams was pulled off of that that patient resource um, that was prefetched and pushed to our service right we didn't make any calls to the fire server this was fire data that was pushed to us and that shows up everybody with me so far anybody running into any issues All right, we'll go over to the Rx view. Um, rather than having the uh, some of the default services checked, you want to select order select example so that you can see um, that response. And what you would do here in under medication, you can search for we'll just say Tylenol. So select Tylenol and keep drilling down until it lands on a concrete orderable. And then ultimately, we see our card return that says, as I mentioned before, reduce cardiovascular risks, prescribe daily aspirin. So if we look at the card response, you'll see there's a, a single suggestion um, that has a single action to it. Uh, and because this sandbox right now only supports um, one order, we just have one action um, if it supported multiple orders, you would want to have a couple actions in here, one that removes something, you know, removes one of the order, and then another one that creates the order. And so we're sending, this is using uh, the smart fire server, uh, which is DSTU2. That's the default server right now. Um, so it's sending a medication order, and if we scroll down to that medication codable concept, you'll see that aspirin gets sent. So you can see the current selected orderable here, acetaminophen, 80 milligram, chewable tablet, Tylenol. Um, but we have a suggestion here from our CDS service that says, you know, switch to low dose aspirin. So if you click this, you'll note that aspirin was in fact swapped out and our card was updated to say currently prescribing low dose aspirin. That's because by virtue of making this change, we have another invocation of that hook and you can actually see that response where our service was called again and recognized um, that the order was as we were expecting, as we were pushing for. All right, so that gets us started. That gives us the two services out of the box. Um, we have them now integrated with the public sandbox, and now it's time to start enhancing things. So going back out to that tutorial wiki, I'm gonna pull up the exercises. And let's get started. We'll start with a, a warm up exercise, um, just to make sure that we can make edits and debug. So I'm using Chrome, but all of your browsers should have developer tools. And if you're not a front end developer, you can probably discover it pretty quickly with a, with a Google. I'm gonna open my JavaScript console Actually, I'm going to navigate back to the CDS sandbox and then up, open the JavaScript console. 
There are some errors in here. I did log an issue for this. It's for another service for that PAMA imaging tab. Um, it needs to be a little bit more resilient. Um, but this will give us any errors um, with calling our CDS services and provide some more uh, detail for debugging as we, we make updates, if there's anything you need to dig into further. But as far as exercises are concerned, what we're gonna do is now that we have that debug window open, we're gonna go and mess with some of our cores settings. So going back into the code, we have that middleware that has the access control allow origin header sent. And right now we're saying for our CDS services, we allow calls from anybody. So if we were to update this to say, well, I only allow calls from google.com and I hit save, it's gonna restart my service. And then if I go and refresh the sandbox, we should see errors in the console that say that the call has been blocked by core's policy. That's what you should be seeing if you go and make that change. Note that our card no longer shows up. And to fix that, rather than restore it to asterisks and allow anybody, we're gonna go ahead and just lock this down to only calls from the sandbox. So I'll update it to sandbox.cdshooks.org and hit save. It restarts my service again and I will refresh the sandbox and now I get my card back. So that's just to get, to get us warmed up to make sure that you, um, you have your service running. It's detecting changes on your file system and restarting. Now let's get a little bit more interesting. Let's customize our card. So we know that for patient view, we have the fire patient resource that was pushed to our service. So let's add another attribute to that card and use some more of that patient data. So if we look at, if I scroll down to that service, the patient view example service, right now that card has the summary field um, along with indication of you know, the severity of the card. Um, but there's another field that's in the, the specification that's just the detail field that tells a bit more about the decision support. So what you should do is add another field to this payload, add another field called detail, and what you wanna include in that detail is the patient's birth date. So I'll give you a, a minute or so, or a couple minutes, um, to go and add that. And you should be able to save it, should refresh your service, and go refresh um, the sandbox and see that birth date show up. So. This may involve you going out to the fire spec uh, and looking up what that specific field is called uh, so that you can make sure that you include it accurately. All right, you can see out on, <clears throat> on my card, um, I have that field there. We're gonna go ahead and, and push on to the next exercise so we can try out um, some more things before our time. The next exercise involves returning an app link card. So you note so far we're not linking to any smart apps, but we want to remedy that. We wanna try out that functionality. Um, and so certainly if you have a smart app, you could add your own link. Um, but out on that wiki, we do have uh, a link to a, a smart app that's part of another tutorial we have for smart apps. It's uh, hosted engineering.cernum.com slash smart on fire tutorial slash example smart app slash launch. So I suggest you copy and paste this URL, um, but you should be able to go into your service. We'll stick with patient view for now and add that as a another link. Note that the existing link, it, ha it has a type on it so an absolute link is like a URL that a user might go and browse to, whereas there's another type, which is smart, 
that indicates to the CDS client that this is a smart app launch. So it can be loaded appropriately. So the existing link you have, I mentioned is an absolute link that says learn more about CDS hooks. You should be able to click on that, open, open a new tab um, to the CDS hooks specification. But once you add that link to a smart app, you should have another link. You can name it whatever you would like, customize that. Um, but it will allow you, if you click that, to open that smart app. So the Smart server uh, will prompt you to log in. It's auto-filled. All you need to do is click log in, and then it should redirect to your app. And it's a very bare bones app, proof of concept, um, but it does um, read the patient resource, calls back into the fire server to load the patient some fields from the fire uh, from the patient resource, as well as some observations. So just to show that it actually did call the fire server. So the next exercise I want to touch on is um, basically creating a new service. So we have the example patient view service, we have an example order select service, we want to add another, another service. This one um, we can again use the patient view hook. Um, we're going to have this one focus on warning about the condition of hypertension. So, but the first step um, beyond querying to see if the patient has hypertension is just to make sure that you can successfully add another service. So within your index.js file, you need to support another HTTP get for that endpoint. You can define that ID for that endpoint to be whatever you want. Um, but you also need to add it to your discovery endpoint to make sure that the sandbox can find it. And if it can find it, it will call it. And so, don't worry so much about whether the patient has hypertension, just return this card for the default patient. For my app, I'm seeing the perils of live coding, and there's an issue resolving another gem. So I'm going to have to, I'll probably reserve this for uh, another time. I don't want to spend anybody's time here. Um, we have a few minutes left. Let me touch on some of the other um, exercises. So basically what you would do from there, um, once you have that card successfully rendering, um, then you 
you have it integrated in your discovery endpoint, um, you've defined an additional service, um, then you want to understand that particular fire query. So you want to construct that and ultimately use a third-party library um, to go and check if the patient has hypertension so that you only return that card when it's relevant. There's other exercises in here pertaining to authorization. So first step here is let's look at one of these JOT tokens, understand um, the components of it, and there's some steps on here to use uh, jwt.io to go and decode that token, um, and some manual steps to verify the signature just to make sure that you cognitively understand how that all works, and ultimately you know, using a library to validate it, um, dynamically discovering the public key, and things like that. So with only a few minutes left, let me close up. I'm using some slides. So obviously we, we have a service. While these services work, they're clearly not production ready. So some of the next steps you would do is find a home for your services. So you know, pick your favorite public cloud provider and go throw your services out there. You want to protect your endpoint, so it, it has to be at a TLS protected endpoint. Um, you're also going to want to start implementing a whitelist of which CDS clients can call you, um, which tenants you support within that CDS client system, which healthcare organizations, as well as what are the public key URLs that correspond to those individual um, CDS clients. When the CDS clients call you, um, they are permitted to use um, either RSA 384, well, I guess they're permitted to use RSA or elliptic curve algorithms to sign um, just because those are some of the recommended ones. Um, but because of the variety of different client systems you're going to integrate with, you probably want to have support for multiple, depending on what the different CDS clients have implemented. Um, but you want to protect your endpoint, making sure that only those you expect to call you can call you. You want to make sure that your services are resilient. So, you know, we were making some assumptions in this basic service. You're going to want to validate the input JSON, make sure that the required fields in the specification are present. You want to handle the unexpected. So, if you ask for prefetch data, uh, but it is not passed to you, you need to be prepared to go retrieve it. Um, but then if there's some error retrieving data from the fire server, you want to make sure that your service doesn't blow up with a 500. You want to return back to the CDS client uh, a 412 precondition failed and inform the CDS client that it's not that you didn't have decision support or that you just crashed, but there was a problem. You want to read over the documented best practices as well as the security section within the specification. There's a lot of details um, and recommendations around security you know, is the main thing. Um, the steps you need to do to validate those tokens, things you need to account for. So you want to be very familiar with that to make sure that your services are secure and following best practice. I invite you all to contribute. Um, as I've mentioned, CDS Hooks is open source, both the specification, um, the sandbox, the default sandbox services, and there's other ecosystem projects as well. Um, you're welcome to log issues as you find them, um, as well as we are very welcoming of pull requests. Um, you are encouraged to get involved in the community as well. So issues and pull requests are great for asynchronous communication, um, but if you haven't been on chat.fire.org, um, there's real-time communication there. There's a stream devoted to CDS hooks um, and topics that are being discussed, and you're invited to participate in that, share your use cases, um, and interact with you know, these new features that are we are targeting for post 1.0 to make sure they account for what you want them to account for. These slides are, again, hosted out on my user on GitHub. I already gave you the link to the tutorial, so you can continue that outside of this. And thank you very much.